Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker and this video is going to be a high stakes hand history review specifically focusing on gangster moves by Viktor Kudinov. So let's get into it. Okay, so hand number one is button versus small blind. Victor raises the button to two and a half x. Kevin Paquet, also known as Tex here, calls 200 and Stefan folds. Small thing to say about preflop, a lot of guys will teach you to not have flatting ranges in a small blind when the button raises two and a half x. And that's generally correct, but it changes as you move up in stakes because the rake structure changes. And as there becomes less and less rake, a cold calling becomes more of a thing. So it's fine. I think it, at 5,100, not a big deal, nothing to, to worry about and not necessarily something you guys should, should be thinking too much about in your games. We get a king 10 deuce two-tone board. Good board for the razor for the button, relatively speaking. These two Broadway boards tend to favor the razor, even though the small blind range is generally stronger than a, a big blind range. Even though the small blind calling range is generally stronger than a big blind calling range. So Kevin checks, Victor bets one third pot, presumably doing this with his entire range due to his advantage, and Kevin decides to call. And we see a four of clubs turn which, you know, shouldn't really hit either player too much and puts a second flush draw out there. Kevin checks and Victor fires a 2x pot bet, which is enormous. This is, you know, more than what's known as geometric sizing. Geometric sizing is where you set up stacks so that you're betting the same percent of the pot on each street. But here we're betting 200% pot on a turn and you'd have just 150% left for the river, which is an unusually large gangster sizing to see. And if you guys want to think about it, and I'm not saying that this is necessarily the appropriate spot for it, but knowing Victor and, and Victor is a GTO machine, it, it probably is. There are some spots where you might decide to go extra big on a turn, even though you don't go geometric for equity denial. So here with two flush draws and lots of kind of pair plus flush draw hands, sizing up and up and up does start putting those kind of hands into problems, right? Like let's imagine Kevin has something like a seven of diamonds. Can he call a two X pot sized bet? And as the bet gets bigger, it starts becoming a question. Whereas if you go a normal bet size, the hand just calls. Same goes for pair plus flush draw. Like at some sizing, you'll reach an inflection point where 10 8 of clubs is not like a happy camper calling your bet. Even if it's mostly calling, it, it loses a lot of its EV. So these bets definitely a thing in theory. I'm not sure this is a spot for it, but very rare to see. Very cool to see. Kevin calls, which I'm guessing his range is not too hard. He's going to have some pair plus flush draws, some top pairs probably some nut flush draws, some combo draws if he has them. And, you know, even though he has all these hands, the bet is so big that he's probably going to have to make folds for most of these hand categories. Like he can't call every top pair to this necessarily. Probably some top pairs have to start mixing in folds. Definitely a bunch of middle pairs are going to have to mix in folds either way. So don't, don't get me wrong. Have, haven't looked at computer simulations for this. So we get the five of spades river. Five of spades in terms of what changes improves ace three for Victor. And it improves, I guess, four or five of diamonds for Kevin if he has that, which is a hand he could have in this kind of situation, I'd imagine. So yeah, Kevin checks. Victor decides to go all in in terms of how good does his hand need to be. The runout's really important. So if you go back to the flop, the dynamic of Victor betting third pot means that Kevin should be check raising most to all of his two pair plus. So yeah, if Kevin has already raised most all of his two pair plus on the flop and we go to the turn in the river and you get a four and a five, which don't really improve him anymore because his range is a small blind range, right? He can't cold call 10, four, 10, five suited. 
king four, king five suited, probably I'm guessing those hands are not in his range or if they are very low frequency. So he actually is not improving to anything on this turn and river, which means that Victor can go for stacks very, very wide. I would guess ace king can do it, aces can do it. Possibly king queen can do it, but I have a feeling king queen would benefit from a lower sizing scheme. But ace king plus feels reasonable. Hard to imagine being beat when you have ace king here in this situation, so why not? And then bluffs are bluffs, right? Like you can you can bluff anything with the main caveat being that in general you don't want to, to bluff busted flush draws as a rule of thumb. Might change a little bit here because of the 2x pattern, but probably still true. So yeah, Victor goes all in, Kevin makes the call, and we see a showdown. Kevin has King Jack offsuit with a Jack of Clubs, which I'm guessing is gonna call preflop, call flop, always. Call turn, probably always or close to it. I could sometimes see a fold if you don't think you're beating the value range. It's not great to have the Jack of Clubs as a kicker, uh, but definitely a callable hand on it. And then on the river, the hand is, again, it's just in a tough spot. Like you have a bluff catcher. Having a king is good, but all your bluff catchers are going to have a king, most likely, or a 10. And the jack of clubs, I'd say, like, you would rather have a club or a diamond than a spade or a heart on the river in general, because you expect your opponent to give up busted flush draws and bluff the non-flush draw suits. So the jack of clubs actually doesn't get bluffed as much by the in-position player as something like a jack of hearts. So the suit's a bit good, but this is getting very, very technical. The hand is, is just very cuspy on turn and river. And yeah, Kevin decides to make the call. And Victor shows up with queen nine offsuit, queen of diamonds, nine of clubs. And like I said, Victor's a GTO machine, but this hand doesn't feel GTO, right? If we had to guess, and we're talking about giving up busted flush draws, you have the queen of diamonds and the nine of clubs. So you have two cards in the busted flush draw suits. Kind of have a feeling like Victor might be overdoing it, but uh, given he's such a machine, I'm not willing to bet on it. Feels to me, though, if I had to make a bet, I'd say Victor was banking on an overfold from Kevin. Was he getting it or not? We'll never know. But yeah, this feels like a bit of an out-of-line combo, intuitively at least. Like I would guess most guys are, are giving up this combo on the river. Yeah, let's go to the next hand and we'll mention that one of the things that differentiate a high stakes, very technically accurate player from lower stakes players is their ability to leverage their stack in. And even though Victor got called on a bluff here, obviously he's going to have value a bunch of the time. He's going to get paid off a bunch of the time. And this is an aspect of poker that's just important to your win rate. Sizing accurately increases your EV without having to do anything else. Like you don't have to bluff too much. You don't have to bluff too little. You just have to, to size correctly, which often means very, very big. And the money goes to you kind of the, the way the game works. So definitely something to, to pay attention to. Second hand is heads up between Victor and Ivan. Victor goes two and a half X from the small blind or button, whatever you want to call it, even 3 bets 4 x which is a very standard size for heads up. And Victor calls, and we see a flop with a 3 bet pot, and it comes to a 7 6 2 tone. You know, every ace high board is, is unique. Every ace high board is, is born special, and you always have to look at the cards and think how they connect with both players' ranges. And here, the first thing I'm thinking is, 6 and 7, okay, A6 suited, A7 suited, 6, 7 suited, pocket 6s, pocket 7s, these are all in the calling range of the 3-bet, almost full frequency. I mean, probably full frequency. So as far as Ace XX boards go, this is probably one of the worst ones. And flush draw always never helps the, the aggressor because his stronger hands get counterfeited more often. So if we're Thinking about, like, even stronger hands are ace-king and ace-queen. This is one of the worst ace boards for a hand like ace-king or ace-queen, where they get devalued very, very heavily. So, yeah, definitely not, if I had to guess, a range bet board, and, and definitely a, a, a kind of dynamic board where both players have to, to do some checking and some betting. So, yeah, goes check-check. Turn five of hearts, which 
You know, again, when we look at the turn and we think about the, the asymmetries between the ranges, you can always think about who the turn benefits more. And as a rule of thumb, high turns are going to benefit the preflop aggressor and low turns are going to benefit the caller. So this is definitely a better turn for Victor's range. He still has pocket fives and six five and ace five more often than Ivan, even seven five suited. So definitely a better card for his range. So Ivan can't get very out of line. Goes check, check again. Eight of clubs on the river. Ivan checks and Victor decides to go all in for 5x the pot, guys, which is not something that you see very often in this kind of situation. But yeah, good run out for Victor. So seeing Ivan a check on the river is very, very natural. And seeing him check on the turn is very natural. Like you'd expect that to happen a lot. Victor going all in for 5x the pot, you have to ask yourself, first of all, what's the value threshold? Can he do this with the bottom end of the straight? Can he do this with the top end of the straight? Or is this just when you have 10-9 for the super nuts? So I don't have a good answer uh, without looking at the sim. We'd have to kind of guess intuitively, but that's how we play most poker hands. So I think fair enough. I would guess that because the run out's so good for Victor, Ivan is checking all of his good hands, including any 10-9 that he gets here with, and maybe any 9 that he gets here with, like he just has to do a ton of checking because Victor improves more than he does. Now, once he's doing a lot of checking, he probably has a check-raising range, and if once he has a check-raising range this all in size stops being a, a thing theoretically. So that would be my guess that you're just never supposed to do this. Just bet some other size and have even raise and then put the rest of the money in if you have the nuts. In terms of which hand is good enough, a 9 might be good enough. I wouldn't be shocked if having a 9 is enough to go the size. And I guess if having a 9 is enough, maybe the size is okay. If you have to have 10 9, I'd, I'd go a smaller size. If any 9x can do this, which is possible, like I said, Victor is a, a GTO machine and probably good sizing because you have a bunch of 9s and, and maybe you're not getting check raised in that case. So yeah, 5x pot from Victor. We'll assume 9x are better for argument's sake because otherwise the sizing doesn't make sense. Even makes the call and we see a showdown. Even has 7 9 of clubs, so... As always, preflop to river, preflop three bet makes sense. Check the flop, easy. Check the turn, easy. Check the river, I think, is less easy, but makes sense, like I said, just because the run out so bad for you. So, again, I'm just guessing, but I wouldn't be surprised if you check most all of your range on this kind of run out and let the other guy be responsible for putting the bet in. So, yeah, well played by Even. Uh, if we look at Victor, Victor shows up with Jack 10 offsuit for another gangster all in bluff. Uh, that unfortunately got called. Here, preflop is very standard. Flop and turn, you could bluff. I'd say you don't have to, and I don't think there's anything particularly exciting about Jack-10 for bluffing. Part of bluffing on A-side boards is trying to get hands like Jacks and tens to fold, so in that sense, Jack and, and ten kind of suck, but you could probably fire this sometimes, not every time. And then on the river, you know, the choice to go all in, as a bluff, I think having a 10 is good. Probably you don't bluff with a pair, so then the other card is not very important. And in that sense, this is a reasonable bluff choice, I think. Like I said, if the sizing of it is a thing, which knowing Victor it probably is, then this seems fine, and you can't do this every time. And we don't know if Victor is doing this every time, so like the difference from the last hand was that in the last hand, I felt like Victor had an out of line combo to be bluffing with, which means we can infer he might like the spot for bluffing. Whereas here I don't feel like he has an out-of-line bluffing combo. This feels like more or less the characteristics of a hand that you'd want to bluff the river with. Again, guys looking up sims might tell me, no, you're supposed to bluff king 10 or whatever. I, I don't know, maybe you're supposed to, to have a pair and bluff 10-7 suited. But I don't think so for what it's worth. But yeah, it, it's not very important to get it 100% accurate. I think the hand is very reasonable and doesn't imply anything about how Victor perceives the spot in terms of over-bluffing or under-bluffing. But yeah, let's wrap up here. I think both hands show 
very sharp technical skills by Victor in, in terms of being able and willing to put his stack in it and recognizing the ranges he can do it with. And putting his opponents to the test uh, in both hands his opponents called. One guy had basically the nuts, the other guy had a bluff catcher. And yeah, these things happen, but for sure Victor has been getting paid off in these and is going to get paid off in the future. So yeah, well played hands. I hope you guys enjoyed them. If you did, please let me know in the comments, like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.